Should be recording now. Hello and welcome to the Manager Q Sprint 160 review. Uh, this was a regular two week sprint. Um, I'll provide the overview and talk a little bit about announcements in the community. Kavya will update us on the UI, Adam on the providers, and Jason on the platform and the API. So this sprint, we had a little bit of a bump up in the number of pull requests opened, a little bit of a bump down in the number of pull requests merged. Um, I, I think as we kind of get reestablished here um, at our new homes at IBM, uh, hopefully these numbers should start trending upwards. Um, there were uh, 41 bugs fixed, 17 enhancements, and the rest sprinkled around. This is kind of us trending towards uh, releasing Lasker. And with that, I do want to announce that we have uh, released Lasker beta. Um, you can see the blog post that Jason put together. Uh, some of the highlights here you can see on the screen, there was uh, enhancements to uh, chargeback to allow multiple tags and to su better support containers. Um, a new provider was added, added um, Amazon EKS. That's a Kubernetes provider. Um, uh, there were many improvements to uh, accessibility in the UI. And uh, on the general front, uh, we upgraded to Rails 6, and we now support Ruby 2.7, um, although we still use Ruby 2.6, I believe, in the release. And uh, we uh, up updated the operator to handle updates. So those are kind of the highlights of the Lasker beta. You can go to that blog post to see more details. And uh, hopefully as we stabilize it, we'll uh, get to Lasker GA. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kavya. Hey, uh, thanks, Oleg. Um, good morning, everyone. There were total nine PRs that got merged across UI repos. Out of nine, five are bugs, one is enhancement and so on. Uh, you can see some of the important PRs out of those. Um, next slide, please. Uh, here, this is an enhancement, uh, change in notification drawer to carbon components. Uh, this is also part of accessibility too. Earlier, keyboard X focus is not at all going to any of the applicable items in the drawer. So here in the right-hand side image, you can clearly see that focus is going inside. Uh, there is more information and more thin shots in the PR. So if anybody, if anyone need more information, please check that. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, here fixed debug about attaching cloud volume form. Yeah, next slide, please. Um, in here in provision instance page, uh, there were two things that were broken. One is missing pagination, and uh, another one is Im though image is selecting for the provision, continue button is still disabled. Um, fixed that, fixed those two issues in this PR. Next slide, please. Um, here fixed a bug about edit cloud volume page. Earlier functionality was completely broken. Fixed that. That's all. I think that's all from UI. Over to Adam. Thanks, Kavya. Uh, so this sprint in core, we refactored the cloud volumes to switch from using the old availability mixin to the new supports feature mixin. There's a long list of other uh, areas that we need to do this for, but this just happened to come up as we were also doing some work to add this to the API. So we figured this we'd knock this one out at the same time. Uh, we also continue to add pluggable secrets to more providers. So the Sprint Kubernetes, Kubevert, Lenovo, and SCVMM uh, added pluggable secrets. For Amazon, we fixed a bug where proxy settings were not being used. This is broken since we added the DDF forms and the new uh, class validate methods. So now uh, you should be able to use a proxy server when adding and ending an AWS provider again. We also fixed a bug where a uh, if you pushed a custom image to Amazon and it didn't have a location, the whole refresh would fail. Uh, so we fixed that one up. Next slide. For VPC and IBM Cloud, uh, Jared added the Toronto and Osaka VPC regions. He also added the resource manager SDK to his cloud tool so that it can be used by the rest of the VPC uh, code base. For Power Virtual Servers, they fixed uh, the flavor memory being saved incorrectly in the wrong units. It was being saved in gigabytes when it should have been in bytes. So they fixed that up. 
they also fix an issue where SAP profile selections were being cached in the dialogue. So even if you were provisioning, you were switching around between profiles, it would keep the, uh, the same profile that you selected first. So they fixed that bug as well. For VMware, uh, we had a community contribution to improve the exception message in memory hot plug when you're reconfiguring a VM. It didn't make it obvious that the issue was that the VM was currently running uh, and that if you powered the VM off, you'd be able to add the memory. So that was a nice enhancement from our users. We also made some enhancements to support using the Go VC simulator, which uh, is the replacement for the old vSphere 5.5 simulator. The, uh, there are a couple of things that were missing that we had to fix in our refresh. And um, this also allows us to use some of the newer uh, API types, such as NSXT switches uh, that were added only recently uh, in 6.0. And so they weren't available in the old simulator. Uh, we also fixed an issue where uh, vSphere tagging API exceptions were causing the whole refresh to fail. There are some times when a timeout uh, hitting this API would, uh, on a full refresh, would cause the whole refresh to fail. And so we're catching those and, and uh, continuing on with the rest of the Vim API. And that is it for providers. Over to Jason. Okay. On the platform side, we had a number of enhancements and bugs, and these are the highlights. Um, Oleg added a verbosity to the um, resource constraints error message. So if somebody changes resource constraints, um, they know a bunch of them and there's failures, uh, we know which ones are actually causing the problems. Um, I added a missing level audit log setting, which we apparently never had uh, in 10 years. Uh, so now you can change the log level on the audit log. Uh, Adam added a setting to enable or disable syndicating events and metrics. Um, the event syndication would and metric syndication would happen basically automatically if you configured Kafka. But now as we're doing more Kafka-based development, somebody might want to use Kafka internally but not syndicate the events and metrics. So we added a setting for that. And finally, Rutger added a, a network manager class to the tenant access strategy. Um, this will add a, a allow for more RBAC and tenant, um, more tenant-based RBAC in the network and cloud uh, volume. Uh, classes. Um, the I added I fixed a bug where I handled Unicode characters in HTTP auth headers. Um, if you had a username with with Unicode characters in it, um, HTTP auth headers are not in Unicode; they're in binary, and that would cause lookups in our database to fail. And you, it was basically impossible to log in with that kind of user. So that's fixed now. Um, I also added access I, STI leaf class for MIQ or oh no, Adam added access I leaf. SS, acts as STI leaf class for MIQ worker subclassing. Um, this, as we move toward subclassing other providers, uh, is important for the workers specifically for them to start up. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Brandon fixed an issue where the uh, operator orchestrator would not pass down ENV bars. So if you change certain values in the CR, they wouldn't get passed down and they wouldn't get update, updated. So that's now fixed. And finally, Adam fixed an issue in the Azure Armrest gem uh, where exceptions would come back in XML, but we would try to parse them not as XML and it would cause failures that were not apparent. Um, so this handles exceptions coming back in XML and deals with parsing them properly. Next slide, please. Oh, documentation. Uh, I just posted a note there. Dan Hawkins did a ton of documentation this round. Uh, there were too many bullets to fit on a screen. Uh, lots of bug fixes and lots of updates. Now, next slide, please. On the API side for enhancements, Kavya added API options for instance snapshot creation. This added the options verb uh, to the existing endpoint. Uh, and she also added uh, edit cloud volume function and route. This added the post and patch um, verbs to the cloud volume uh, endpoint, uh, which already existed, but was missing those for the UI. And finally, on bugs, uh, Adam fixed an issue where the user's uh, active record object would get dumped to logs directly, but it didn't have really any information in it, so it was a pointless log, uh, and he made it print the actual uh, information that was needed. And next slide, please. And that's it. All right. Um, next sprint will be in two weeks, as usual. Same time, same place. Um, in the future, we are thinking of changing the... Uh, uh, the sprint review to uh, US afternoon time slot.
So uh, probably by, by next time we'll announce a new time that we will meet on. And with that, I wanna thank everyone, uh, the contributors, um, the speakers and the community in general. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks a lot. Bye.